So I'm really pleased to be here tonight at the CCTV Channel 17 holiday party and Matt Kelly is joining me and Matt is the new channel director for Channel 17 and also the executive producer of CCTV Productions. Welcome. Thank you. I'm really, really excited to be here and uh, excited for the holiday spirit here and what uh, 2013 is going to bring. So you've been on the job for two weeks. What, it's been, what has it been like? Um, overwhelming. <laughs> but uh, what's really great is um, everybody's been so welcoming and and uh, very helpful, very willing to assist me trying to learn the, the lay of the land, so to speak. So the first week was a little bit um, challenging, but the second week already feels comfortable, like it is home in a sense. So that's been just really heartwarming. So. And um, are we starting to plan for the legislative session? Yes, we've already started uh, contemplating our uh, signature series under the dome. Uh, Jill Kruinski is here. Uh, we're going to be speaking a little bit tonight and uh, further in the week ahead about upcoming topics that we're going to want to cover uh, so that it dovetails with what the legislature is talking about so that we can bring in senators and representatives to speak on those topics to you, the viewer. That's great. Yeah. And then we're going to go right into town meeting. Yeah, it's uh, very, very quick. So um, no downtime. It's uh, learning on the job, as they say. And, so. and luckily, you um, didn't have to work the general election, which we've all been doing. So it's a very, it's a, it's a jam-packed four or five months. Well, I was uh, down in Montpelier you for were, that, yes. so that was exciting yeah. uh, as well. Uh, as I was telling you uh, throughout this whole process, um, I'm a, I, I grew up here in Burlington, um, <clears throat> but I left in 1990, so 22 years ago. Um, and so coming back to Burlington, a lot of the issues are still the same. Mm -hmm. uh, they've not been solved. It's just the people uh, that have changed. So. And what have you been doing for the past 22 years? Oh, gosh. Uh, it's been a whirlwind uh, tour of uh, the country, at least. Uh, the Bay Area, New York City, uh, Los Angeles, and Hawaii, and now back here. So a big circle uh, to come back where it all started. Well, I'm so glad that you're on the team. It's very exciting. So Margaret Harrington is right there. Maybe you could bring her over and we can interview her. Okay. Thanks a lot. So we're here at the CCTV Channel 17 party, and uh, we love this party. It is uh, a great opportunity for us to visit with folks that come in and make TV and attend our events and are really our diehard champions of free speech and community engagement. And uh, coming up, we have Margaret Harrington, who has been working on um, anti-nuclear activism for many years, and we're so glad you're with us. Oh, Two, twice in one day you get to be on TV. Yes, how wonderful, and, and uh, happy holidays and everything like that. It's, it's such a pleasure to work with Channel 17, and I've been doing it for about four years now with the Nuclear Free Future program, and you've always been a wonderful person here for me and everything, and I've loved working with Rob Reiber and Tuya Lendl so much and uh, welcoming the new director, which is, is seems like a nice guy. <laughs> very exciting. He is. He's very outgoing. It's wonderful. Now, um, tell us, what was the topic of your program today? It was uh, nuclear waste, the gift that keeps on giving. And it was about the huge problem of nuclear waste, both at uh, the American nuclear power plants and all over the world, and especially with Fukushima Daiichi in Japan. And it's an ongoing problem, and uh, there are wonderful experts right here in Burlington. The Gundersons, Arnie and Maggie Gunderson, who've been on the program several times over the last few years. And, uh, they're a wonderful resource in the community, and they can be seen right on Channel 17. Um, what kind of impact do you think your programs have? I think that it gives information to people who are not really apprised of the situation, because in, in many ways we are blocked off from what's really happening. For example, uh, seven women can be arrested down at Vermont Yankee for trespass of the Vermont Yankee power plant, and yet their story isn't publicized at all. For, for they, they went down there for 22 times to make it a, a, a direct action against nuclear power, and especially Vermont Yankee that down there because it's unsafe and so dangerous, and uh, yet they are ignored by the, by the press. But here, on, they've been here on the Nuclear Free Future program, and uh, that's very important, I think, that people know that there are activists out there and concerned people. And in the case of the, my guest today, who is Arnie Gunderson, a chief engineer with Fairwinds Energy Education, somebody who knows exactly what is going on. 
So that's, that's why it's important and why Channel 17 is important because it gives more the, the in-depth information on issues that uh, really should not be swept under the rug or in a corner. Well, Margaret, thank you for your work You're to welcome. do that. Thank you so much. We exist here for you, so thanks for thank making you. use of it. Thanks for, for making it possible. Absolutely. <laughs> Good to see you. So um, we're going to be speaking here with Bob Appel, longtime public servant. Welcome. Nice yeah, to see you. Mark. Thank you. So, nice um, to be here. You've um, been toiling in the fields of civil rights for many, many years. Well, between that and criminal defense, 35 years. Is that right? Yes. And now you are moving on to a new position. What I is it? I am. I'm joining a law firm to be known as Cone, Rath, Dannon, and Appel in Hinesburg, Vermont. Uh, it's a firm that Eileen Blackwood recently departed to become city attorney here in Burlington. So, and Eileen's practice is similar or was similar to my interest in employment discrimination and employment cases and school cases. So, and I hope to do some criminal defense again. I sort of miss it. It's uh, once you do it, it gets into your blood. So I am looking forward to the change. And what have been the highlights of your career so far? Wow. Uh, big question. I know. Big question. Um, the opportunity to serve the people of Vermont in a variety of roles, and I think do some important work, particularly around. Um, making us who are white in the dominant culture understand that people who don't look like us may have different experiences. I think generally, although Vermonters uh, lack malice on race, they also lack experience with different cultures. Um, I live in Hardwick. Uh, I'm over here a lot and it's like two different worlds. So, um, you know, I, I, I think getting past the sense that we don't have racism here has been a struggle and will continue to be a struggle, but I think we're making progress in that regard. The other issue, I mean, I've been asked that question a bunch in the past week, and I have to say that the issue of criminalizing people with psychiatric disabilities is a very important one to me. Um, it started when I was a public defender investigator, seeing people come through with very serious mental health issues, and they go into jail and don't, you know, they don't get treatment, they get managed. I am all for holding people accountable, but we also want to take the opportunity while we're paying to house them to try to improve their lot in life and therefore make the community more safe. So that's been a long-standing issue to me. Um, and then the other piece is around physical access, removal of physical architectural barriers and housing in places of public accommodation. Vermont is full of old housing stock, old commercial stock, um, and it's a challenge. Again, it's a lack of understanding by people who are, I like the term temporarily able to body, as I get older, I mean, I think we're all going to have infirmities and the notion mm -hmm. of providing universal access, which makes it easier for people with present physical mobility issues, makes it easier for all of us. So I think that's an important issue going forward. And, and racial profiling by police. Those have sort of been my focus. Do you think that the mental health courts has, has helped in the I area? Do. I do. Unfortunately, they only exist in three counties. Oh that being Washington, Rutland, and Chittenden. And when you're outside of Rutland, Washington, and Chittenden, there's virtually no public transportation. And when you're in the throes of the criminal justice system, you're often ordered not to drive. You may be under suspension. You know, it becomes very challenging. And I've been pushing uh, that that opportunity become universal and not an accident of geography. So, um, and also drug courts. I mean, the other driver of criminal, um, you know, something like 85, 90 percent of inmates have substance abuse problems, either drug addiction and or alcoholism. Um, you know, and the other statistic that always sticks with me is people in jail under the age of 22, 90 percent are high school dropouts, and half of those were on individual education plans, meaning they were eligible for special ed. They have some form of disability. So, again, it goes back to the notion of we're criminalizing people with disabilities instead of trying to build their capacity to lead productive, safe, healthy lives and contribute to our community. So I'm sure that we will continue, uh, and my successor and the staff there can, will continue on these um, issues. And I'm hopeful that the community joins in with that. And I really want to thank you and your staff here. You've been very open to... Um, engaging the community on these issues over the years. I've had the opportunity to sit here with a variety of hosts and uh, it's, just, it's just wonderful that you provide this um, sounding board for issues that 
all too frequently are not covered by uh, the commercial media. Well, I have to say, I think the commercial media is coming along, yeah. without a doubt. But I think you've you have shown great leadership, and I commend you for that, and hope you can do it for many, many more years. Thank you, Bob. It's a real mutual admiration society. So good luck with your new position. Yeah, thank you. And we'll see you soon. We want you. We'll get you on. Okay. Thanks. Thanks so All right. Very happy good. Holidays. Thank you so much. So um, happy holidays. We have Mike McNamara, who is the chairman of the CCTV board. Hello. How are you? Good. How are happy you? Happy holidays. Same to you. So glad that you're here. Glad to be here. So um, you've been continuing with your long-standing series on housing and community development. The Vermont Housing and Communities Show. Uh, next show will be the first Wednesday in February. And what um, was the most recent program that you did? Uh, we just did a show on the fiscal cliff uh, with Earhart Manka of the Affordable Housing Coalition, just talking about what the ramifications are for housing in the upcoming federal budget discussions and also what we might expect in the legislature coming up in the state. And uh, do you think we're going to go over the fiscal cliff? Or? Um, my, I think we have, there's a good possibility we could go over the cliff. Yeah. I read an article where someone wrote, um, we created this cliff, it doesn't mean we need to all go over it. That's right, that's right. That, we did create it and um, you know, they created it because they couldn't come to the grand bargain, and now they're trying to come to the grand bargain only at a very compressed period of time. So I know uh, Congressman Welch thinks we're going, going over, and the hope is that if we do go over, it will set the stage to, to fix it in a short period of time. But sometimes things take longer in Washington than they, than they should. So, so how have you um, enjoyed working in Vermont in the political scene. I mean, for many years you have been in public service and when you compare it to Washington... Well, I came from Massachusetts and of course politics can be very corrupt in Massachusetts. They're very clean in Vermont, comparatively speaking. Um, as, as we say in Vermont, we play in a small sandbox so people have to be nice to each other because you're going to see them you know, on the street or at the dump or wherever you bump into people. And uh, we've really appreciated having you in a leadership position at CCTV. It's been great. I, I've been on the board now for three years, four maybe. Least, yeah. And um, it's great to see, to learn about the other side of how everything goes. It's one thing to sit here and talk to people. That's easy. But what you and the staff do are just amazing to put all the programs together, like Channel 17, like Common Good Vermont. Um, it's really pretty amazing. Well, it's certainly fun to work with you. Well, and it's certainly fun to work with you and all the new blood you've brought in recently. We hated to see Jess Wilson go, but um, you know she's, she's moving on and seems to be doing well, and we're bringing new blood in like Matt, and uh, I think it's all going to be good. It is. It's been great. So thanks so much, Michael. Thanks so much, too. Happy New Year. All right, so um, again, here we are at CCTV, Channel 17, holiday party, and we've got Arnie Gunderson. It's always a pleasure to have Arnie. How are you? Hello. Getting some air time today. I know. How are you? Are we live? We're live. Oh, my God. I know. Oh, this is scary. I know. Well, don't be scared. It's <laughs> fine. I'm here with you. Okay. So um, I know you've been quite busy in the past, well, forever, but what have you been working on in particular in the last couple months? Well, I got back from Tokyo in the beginning of September, I was there for 10 days. Um, I was invited by a bunch of citizens groups, and I spoke to the Diet, which was fascinating. That was the, you know, that's their House of Representatives, kind of. Um, the Japanese Law Association, and um, uh, at the University of Tokyo, there was a symposium. And then a couple other citizen group meetings as well. Um, yeah, on my least favorite topic, Fukushima. Um, but apparently, you know, Maggie and I have been really honest, unlike their own government. So apparently we're well respected over there. So they, I guess they appreciated that at least somebody they could find on the Internet was telling them the truth. Yeah. And so I think um, it has really fallen out of the news that what's been going on in Japan. So, so what is the current situation there in terms of the contamination and the quality of life for you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, contamination's all over the place, and um, uh, I was in Tokyo, and I had my little plastic bags and my little spoon, and I was collecting samples, 
and I brought them back, and uh, the, the ground in Tokyo is as radioactive. If it was in the United States, we would be shipping it to Texas as radioactive waste. And, and people are walking around in that, and that's, that has become the new norm. And you know, the, the theory is, well, it's low and you won't get cancer, but when you spread that out, Tokyo's 35 million people. Um, you know, clearly people are gonna get cancer. The, 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 the neat thing is that um, there's essentially a rebellion underway led by women. Uh, and in that culture, what, it's, it's really extraordinary to see women take a step forward. And, um, uh, you know, their husbands sort of still believe the party line. But um, women are saying, you know, I'm taking the kids and leaving. Because we are not going to live within 100 miles of this plant. And you can either come with me or not. So there's an extraordinary change. Um, political change in the, in, uh, in the office, yeah. yeah. Well, it sounds like a real domestic change, too, in, in terms yeah. of the house, household dynamics and culture. Oh, it, yeah, yeah, it really is. And, and I think once you cross that line, you don't go back. You know, I think it'll be very difficult for the women to disappear and become subservient to the men again, which I don't think you'd want to happen anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I want to thank you so much for your work and certainly keeping our, our audience posted by participating in programs here at Channel 17. You, know, you, guys, you guys were there before CNN and before all those guys, so I really feel like I owe it to, to, you know, to, to Channel 17 because you were listening before the world wanted to hear. So, yeah. Thank you, Arnie, for all your work. Good to see you. Happy New Year. So we're here at Channel 17 and CCTV's holiday party. We've got a wonderful staff working um, in the background. We've got Sylvan on camera, Megan O'Rourke in the control room, and uh, we have just a wonderful group of people. Terry, how are you? Why don't you come join me? Terry um, Jeralaman is one of our regular access folks. You're a public access user. Why do you support community access television? Well, because it's an opportunity for um the general public to get their point of view across. I, I do produce a program called Vermont Today on uh, VCAM, Channel 15. I'm on at um, uh, 9.30 every Monday evening, 11 o'clock on Wednesday evenings, and 6.30 uh, Thursday mornings. And um, we have a very interesting program this time. I'm talking with two, uh, uh, two residents of Wake Robin who are relatively wealthy, and they're advocating um, higher taxes for the wealthy. Uh, to solve our budgetary problems. And that's the only fair thing to do. Um, when, um, after the Second World War, the tax, top tax rate was 90%. And now it's, it's way down, uh, about 30%. In fact, uh, some of the richer people, like Warren Buffett, pay less than their secretaries do. So it's really not fair. And uh, So we'll look forward to that program. That's awesome. Yes. So I, I interview um, Keith Olson, who's a former professor. He lives at Wake, Wake Robin. Don Hornstein, who is a, um, managed a, um, a mutual fund on Wall Street, and um, uh, Stan Greenberg, who is uh, um, uh, blind and um, uh, has another point of view. Well, I can't wait to see that, and uh, we're just so glad you're using VCAM. That's great news. That's our sister station, so thank you. It's a great party. Thank you for coming. It's always great to see you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Governor Hoff, it's always a pleasure to see you. Come on over here in the light with me. We'll get right here by the camera. How are you, my friend? Well, I'm okay. Yeah, well, I'm glad you made it. This is awesome. Well, I've made it here for a number of years. Yes, you, know? you have. It's really fantastic. <laughs> when no, no one doesn't feel she has to cook anything for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're counting on. That's good. So, you know, we go back a long time from our very first series of programs that we did with you. Yeah, I think we do. And, um, you know, Nat's been working on the archives. I think we have almost 19,000 pieces of media. Do you really? Yeah. And then what are you going to do with it? Well, we're archiving it. People can actually watch a lot of it online, or they can come here and watch them. And, it, you know, it goes back to 1984. Really? Wow, that's a while ago. It almost goes back as far as I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this year was a big year because they just completed a book about the work that you did while you were governor, right? Who did? Wasn't that the, didn't that book get published oh, about yeah, by, uh, the 60s? Yeah, uh, three guys. Yeah, those three guys. And it's a very nice book. Really? Yeah. 
very complimentary and very complete. And it's a nice book. So you're pleased with how it turned out? Oh, very much so. It must be, feel good to have your legacy documented so people can understand what happened during that period. Well, it's nice to have your legacy documented, period. Uh, so much happens in this world that nobody gets credit for, so it's nice to get credit for something. You deserve a lot. You've been a real leader and uh, inspiration to us, so thank you so much, and thanks for coming tonight. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. Great to see you, Phil. See you. Okay. So, um, Phil Hoff is uh, our former governor here in the state of Vermont. He was governor in the 60s, and uh, we are always really happy that he and Joan come and visit with us. Hello, Lisa, how are you? We've got Lisa Condon, the newlywed. How are you? I'm well. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Good to see you. Thanks so for glad to be here. So tell us what you've been working on. You're just a hive of industry in the nonprofit and the community in the business sector. I Wow, I've been working on quite a bit. Uh, the most recent thing, and it actually, we're just kind of shutting it down um, from a crowd campaign fund for UVM Extension and doing the ROPS campaign, which is a rebates for roll bars program. But, you know, I continue my quest for doing good in the community of Burlington. So, so how did that campaign go? Well, we wanted to raise $23,100. We raised about $10,000 of that. And since it was the first time we were doing a crowdfunding campaign, I think that that's excellent. Um, and what that equals out to is actually putting roll bars for 15 of the 35 farm, 15 roll bars on 15 families of the 35 families on the waiting list. So that's, that's important. And maybe just to remind people why roll bars on tractors are so vital. Absolutely. So farmers in general um, are 800% more likely to die than the average worker. And what roll bars do, they are 99% effective from saving a farmer's life when a tractor actually rolls over. So that is really amazing because they're expensive and the families can't afford them. So this program subsidizes them. Absolutely. It's a 75% subsidization for subsidization. I guess that's a word I just made. It. Sure. <laughs> I like the word. Um, and so what that does is it allows these families to actually purchase them. And tractors have a 40 plus year uh, lifespan. So it actually gets passed from generation to generation. And families get to then not only keep the tractors, but keep the farms. And we as people of Burlington or across the country get to have the bounty that they provide. It's wonderful. Yeah. Well, you deserve a lot of credit for all your community activism, so thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And thanks Good for being you. on the CCTV board. We miss you. I miss you. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. So Richard Kemp is here with us. Richard is a um, longtime supporter, and uh, I don't know how many episodes of your program you've done, but... Over 100. Fantastic. But I also served on the board of directors, so is that right? Don't you remember? I do, and you served on the Channel 17 trustees as well. Yes. You I'm are committed to public service. Uh, great commitment. I'm sitting, you know, standing here with a person that has made an enormous impact in the citizens and the life of the city of Burlington. And the person is not me, it's the person holding the mic. Thank you so much. And it's pro both of us, really, when you get right down to it. Yeah. So thank you, you let me make television, and I keep on doing and it. And you do it. Thank God. <laughs> yes, yeah. Richard's this show, Near and Far. Great program and a uh, great party. It's always nice. It is. It's really, it's a nice, it's a very delightful group of people. So thank and you thank so you much. Thank you so much for what you continue to do day in and day out. Thank I don't know you. if you work on Sunday or not, but. I try not to. <laughs> Although I was addressing envelopes on Sunday. <laughs> thank you, Richard. So I want to um, thank everyone for joining us. I think Abdullah is going to join us. Abdullah is one of our volunteers. He comes every um, every week to run the cameras and direct the shows. How are you, my friend? Hi, Laurie. I'm We're Laurie. so glad. Thanks for joining me here. Yeah, as you can see, I'm enjoying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We got the lemonade flowing right in this operation. So tell us why you volunteer here at Channel 17. Yeah, first I started from uh, being community producer, which is, it was in, uh, interesting to go get uh, the Occupy uh, New York or Burlington news story out and bring it in here and get their voices out. So I started from there and, and I realized I like to serve, so why not? just keep on serving so and i uh, talked to rob and rob said okay i think yeah you need to get on one on on a one year 
contract to serve, I say, all right, uh, I sign up for it. And he say, make sure you come every day. I say, okay, I'll come. Uh, you don't have to worry. <laughs> I worry about that. So. so you come every week and you run the cameras and you direct the shows? Yeah, I, except when I'm sick. That's the only time. <laughs> well, everybody's allowed to be sick. And then you recently got a new job, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, two, uh, four months ago now, maybe, uh, with Locomotion. Fantastic. Yeah. How's that going for you? It's great, and there are great people to work with. And I, as you uh, maybe can remember, I told you when I had my accident, how everybody came out to help me from there. I never had... Uh, so, uh, found myself surrounded with such a people that are so caring for someone else, you know. Uh, so uh, I'm thankful for what happened to me. Well, we're grateful for you and all your help, Abdullah. It's just a pleasure to work with you. Thank you. So, so thanks much. a lot. Thanks for joining us today. Cheers. Okay, Lee Terhune, community activist. Lee, how are you? I'm really good. How are you? We've worked together a long time. You know, we were talking about that earlier as we were sitting enjoying your wonderful dinner. What a spread. I know. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah, we were talking, we were telling some youngsters about the old days when we first got this wonderful community asset. It's, and it's just so awesome that you're still here. I mean, you know. Well, and so are you. You're still doing yeah, community true, activism true, true, in the true. old new North End. Yeah, true. So, um, any good stories? Any success stories from making television that you want to report? From making television, well, I did the um, the North End NPA report for about four years, and that was so much fun. You know, Phil Levine and I did that together, and Carol did camera, and Chuck did the production room, and then we'd always go out to dinner afterwards. And we had our usual hecklers who would call and ask us questions. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. it was a good show. Yeah, it was fun. And you're still active with the NPA? Um, up until last night. Last night was my last NPA meeting, except I'll continue to go as a resident. But it was my last meeting as a steering committee member. And um, it brought things full circle to me because when I began with the NPA, I took that planning part of NPA, Neighborhood Planning Assembly, very seriously, and it was because we were faced with a with really a devastating development that was looming over us. In your neighborhood? And in my neighborhood, yeah, which was um, ap out on Apple Tree Point. And that went away, and now we have a wonderful project that's about to be break ground in the spring. Oh, that's good and news. And so I get to leave on a high note. Fabulous. And we get to leave on a high note, too, here at the Channel 17 CCTV Party. Thanks for joining us, and thanks for watching.